When it comes to multi screwdrivers, nobody touches Mega Pro. These are the best screwdrivers on the market, hands down. And they come with a lifetime guarantee. So you buy this tool once, and that's all you need to do. Megapro.net, don't forget it. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today I'm going to cover replacing my motor from my squirrel cage on my AC unit. I woke up to a hot house, I heard humming noise in my attic, right where my return air is. So that's where my squirrel cage is, right above the return air. So I shut off my power, and that's the first thing you want to do. You want to take your power on the outside unit, unplug it. You have your outside compressor right on the wall next to it. You'll see a cable going up to that and you'll open that box up and you can pull that out. You have two fuses usually, they're tube fuses. Once you do that, you go to your inside breaker. Turn your breaker off, that goes to your AC. Then you can go upstairs and you'll have a little light switch with a box, usually around your air AC unit. Or if it's in a hallway, you open that up and you'll usually see a switch turn that switch off. That way you know the power is shut off before you even get into it. Now, first thing I checked was my capacitor because most of the time that's what goes out and they only cost between five and ten dollars so it's easily replaced. If you don't have a tester just go ahead and replace this first. When you test your capacitors you want to make sure that all the power is off and you disconnect the two terminals to this. You're not going to get a good reading if it's connected. Now, before you even touch this thing, you want to take some type of insulated screwdriver or anything that's insulated with metal here and you can touch the two terminals together to discharge it. You don't want to get shocked because this does hold a charge and if you touch this while the capacitor is still charged, it can shock you. Okay, now that we got that out the way, we're going to go ahead and test it. This is a voltage tester, a voltage meter, but this one happens to have um, a tester for farads, and it says CAP for capacitor right there. Now I'm going to take this, and uh, my positive and negative, it doesn't matter which side you put it on, you just want one on one terminal and one on the other, and it should give me a reading. You can see right there it says 15.29. That's telling me that it's over 15 and this is fine. This thing's working properly. I replace them whenever they're old like this and this one's old so I'm going to go ahead and replace it since I'm working in a unit anyway. Here is a new one and we're going to test this one out. And you can see this one says 15.32 or 33 it's in that same range and this one's good. Well, we checked the capacitor. Next thing to do is go ahead and take this motor out. What I'm going to do first is unbolt this and take it loose and show you how that's done. I'll show you how to put it back in. I didn't have time this morning. I got up. I needed to get this checked out. I pulled it out so I can take this apart and uh, get a new one. Now, once I get the new one, I'll show you exactly how it goes back in. If you look right here, you'll see the rod coming through. This is the spline on the uh, motor, and it comes right through here and bolts onto the squirrel cage. I just unbolted this little set screw, and luckily, I don't have to really pull on this. It's going to slide right out. If this is clean, it'll just slide right off of there, and I'll be able to replace the motor. When you put this back on, you have to adjust it to where this is not rubbing. You can't have it too high or too low. It's got to be right in that center part when you set it down. That way it doesn't rub on anything and cause the motor to burn up again. All right. I'll just unscrew this a little more. Flip it on its side. Be very careful because I do have the control panel still on here. I just left, I left the board on here, disconnected everything, and I took pictures of it with my uh, cell phone on exactly how the wiring comes off. I even did a little bit of a video on it for myself because I'm not an AC guy. I'm just showing you how I'm going to fix my AC. I like to fix anything that goes bad on my house. If I have a problem, I'll call a friend. But I like to tackle things myself first. Now we'll take these bolts loose right here and pull this motor out.
These are little quarter inch screws. Alright. Well, I have my new motor. And uh, it was about $110. Uh, I've got to take the brackets off my old one and put on here, but before I do that, I want to clean out this squirrel cage. Um, dust builds up in there over time, and I'm taking a wire brush, and I'm going to hit the back sides of it and vacuum it out. I don't want to use any water or anything like that because I have the motherboard still uh, mounted right here, and I, I want to be careful with that. So we're not going to use any water. I'm just going to take and clean this, brush it off real good, and vacuum it out. This wire brush does a good job of getting everything out of there. And I'll vacuum it out real good before we put it back together. <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could take this circuit board off. I would just have two screws on this side and this other side and then pull the whole bracket off. But there's no sense in me doing that. I'm not going to play around with this. I'm just going to clean it up and put it back together. Here's my new motor. Let's take this off. Get this out the way. You see right here, this little plug, this little plug is made to make the motor go forward or reverse. All right, um, you can check out the schematics on, on whatever you have. I try to make sure to get the same OEM specs and uh, the closest thing I could to getting OEM that I could get. So you can see the wiring here is the same color. Everything kind of matches, the plugs are the same. This is the only difference, this is a newer motor. So you can take this, instead of changing the wires around to make this go forward or backward, you just pull this out and you can flip it and it's going to make the motor either reverse or go forward. So once I put it in, I'll see which way it's going and if it's not blowing, it's sucking, then I'll flip this around and I'm right. Here's the shaft and you see you have a flat spot on the shaft. Once I put this down in that hole, it goes through to the other side on my uh, squirrel cage and then there's a little set screw that's going to lock right onto the flat part there. That's all there is to it. So we're going to take this out and put the brackets on it. This is an awesome little wrench that I got from Mega Pro. And uh, I showed this earlier when they sent me one. You can see you can take this thing and just spin it. That's how tight the gears are. So you barely turn it backwards and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. So if this screw is really a, a small screw that's really light, I can still just back it off and it still bites. I don't have to worry about the gears being so big to where it stops it. To put them back on, I'm going to use my other Mega Pro screwdriver because it has a longer shaft and I have to put a little pressure on it to, to start the new screw holes. These um, were in there from the factory so they were easy. These are just little holes that they have on there and you're going to make your own thread. Now it's time to set my motor in place. I'm going to take the squirrel cage and put it right in the center. And I'm going to take my motor, carefully keep my wires out of the way when I set it down on here. So I don't want to pinch any wires. That wouldn't be good. Put it right in that hole, slide it down, and these will line up. I'm going to bolt this down, and then we'll adjust the squirrel cage and put the lock nut on the bottom. Since I have so many screws here, I'm going to get them lined up, then I'm going to use my cordless gun on it. But you can see how easy this is. I can barely turn it, and it's going to lock. It goes down every time.
shoot, this is so fast, I don't have to worry about getting a cordless out. It only takes seconds. Okay, now it's all bolted in. I'm gonna take it and spin it around where I can line it all up. And you can see the flat part of the shaft. That's where I want this screw to go and lock onto it. So I'm gonna turn it and line these up with each other and get it ready. So when I pick this up slightly, not all the way and not all the way down, I put it in the middle I'm going to snug it up, then I'm going to take a wrench and tighten this up. Well, it's in there, it's clean, and you can see it's balanced, it's not touching or, or anything, so it, it spins really freely, and we're ready to put this thing in. Now I'm going to take the squirrel cage and put it in here. It's about 110 degrees up here, so it's pretty hot, so we're going to try to make it quick. This right here is where your filter is. If you're not sure where your squirrel cage is, you look for your filter and you go above it and to the side or somewhere around that because that squirrel cage is pulling the air out of here and then it's putting it into your coils. So it's gonna run it through there. That's why you'll see when it comes on, it kind of sucks up with your filter in the bottom because it's pushing it through here. It's sucking the air up. All right. Let's go ahead and slip it in. I'm going to set myself up right here. It's, it's really not that heavy. And uh, let me show you what I'm talking about with the flanges. The flanges are right here. This little lip. This sits across there. And that's going to slide right into position when it's ready. This part goes down like this. The motor goes up. Once I set it on those glides, or it gets in position on there, it slides in rather easily. I make sure that I can get to that wire for reversing it. It's back there. It shows you on the housing where the rotation's supposed to go, the way it's supposed to spin. So if you see it spinning the opposite way, you'll just reverse this right here, this little plug that I was talking about earlier. So slide it back. This needs to go back in on the side over here. So I'm just gonna slip it in and put my screws back. I keep all my screws in the same place in a little bin so that way I won't lose them. Okay, that's in place. These two brown wires are going to go to my capacitor, which I haven't put in yet. That's right here. And all I need to do is slide that down into a slot. They have a couple of slots for the capacitor for different ones if you needed to replace it, I guess. And I'm gonna slide that out and put a little screw down in there to lock this in place. This little screw will just hold that capacitor from moving around. Keeps it right in position. All right. All you have to do is hook up your two brown wires. There's no sequence. One goes on one side and one goes on the other. So I'm gonna take one here. The other goes on this side. These wires will go right here and I'm gonna go back to my phone, refer to my phone for that. So I'm gonna hang this here, get my phone out. Here you go. So, I had one that was red and I put a mar marker on it and that's twisted in with another wire. That's my first ones. See how they're twisted together? I didn't even take them off of that. That goes on the second screw right here. 
I'm gonna set it in here and tighten it up. This harness right here comes down and it's gonna plug into there. So I'm gonna put the back one in first. Which way it goes on there? Snaps in. Now I'll put this one in. I almost forgot. I have to slide this back a little further and there's a little tech screw that'll go down here and one up top to lock this frame on here so it doesn't vibrate loose. Now I'm going to double check all my wiring with my photographs that I have and the diagram and make sure all of this is lined up right and we're going to go ahead and turn it on and give it a whirl. Everything's together and now I'm going to test it out. This is a safety button. It connects to the door. When you take the door off this button pops out that way it will not come on but I also make sure I turn off the breaker before I mess with this. You don't want to take chances. Now the breaker's back on. All I have to do is press this button and my squirrel cage should start spinning. And if it's spinning in the right rotation, I'll be good. Like I said, if it doesn't spin in the right rotation, then all I have to do is switch that plug around. Okay, let's go. Sounds good. I'm going to take a look at it. Oh yeah, working great. Quiet as a mouse. And let me see which way it's spinning. Yep, it's spinning in the right direction. So we are good. Now all I have to do is take my wires and put my wire straps on them and get them neatly tucked in. And we'll put our cover on and we're finished. Everything's shut off and we're ready to put the covers back on. I just take them and slip them in place. And this will go around. When that pushes down, it pushes that button in, like I said. When you take this off, automatically that button kicks out so it won't go running on you. It's a safety feature. It's a Louisiana summer. It's 88 degrees downstairs. Up here it's about 110, but it's working. So it's gonna start cooling things off. We're all done, thank God. It's all finished and I have cold air coming into my house. The first thing I checked was my capacitor. This is a capacitor and I showed you how to put one back in. The other one was shaped differently because this one was OEM and the other is an aftermarket. No big deal. The slots a lot of times will allow you to put different ones. If not, you can put a little bracket on there and screw it to the, to the housing, to the sheet metal in there. No big deal. Anything to hold that in place. That's all you need to do because you just want a wire going into it and a wire coming out. This is what's going to give you the jolt to start your motor. Well, another job out the way. Let me run something past you real quick. Megapro is a company of really high quality screwdrivers and um, this is one of them. This is one that they sent me to test out for them and it's really neat, not even on the market yet. It's a fantastic little screwdriver. I give them a thumbs up on it because I use it on every job that I've been on where I need a, a handheld screwdriver. You can bear down on this thing. It's ratcheting and you can't even hear the gears. You can't hear them. They're so smooth. It's just just like it goes backwards and forward. That's how there is to it. It has multi bits in here that lock up into it just like all their other screwdrivers. There's a lifetime warranty on these. These are really durable. They have a rod built into this. So this is all metal with the plastic on top of it. So it's really strong and the plastic is really strong. Like I said, lifetime warranty on other tools. Here's a kit that you'll see me use all the time in my jobs. This is a, a Mega Pro Multi Kit and it has three different screwdrivers in it. This one right here is a ratcheting screwdriver that's super smooth. You can hear this one click a tiny bit, but it's really, really smooth. It has small teeth that are really strong. Another great screwdriver, I use it all the time. I have my HVAC one. This one has all kind of bits in the back too, just like the other ones. Now, one of my favorites is, this, is the shore lock. The shore lock, you can take your extensions, lock them in. Once you push them in, they lock. There's a button to push in here to release it. So when I put my tips on the end, they lock too. 
Now I don't have to worry about them coming out. If I use a long extension and I'm trying to get a screw out somewhere, I don't have to worry about this coming loose. They're great tools, like I said, lifetime warranty, and this company backs them up. It's a great company to deal with. Megapro.net.